Hello, how are you beautiful people? Today we're going to be discussing uh, default route BGP, which is not black magic in any stretch of the imagination. So don't listen to what people say. It is not difficult. It is not, doesn't require any sacrifice or anything like that. It's actually pretty simple. I mean, yeah. Cheers. Mm, damn, that's good. Mm -hmm. So anyway, many of you guys have wanted to know about default route BGP. So I'm doing a small series of videos for our Patreons. This is a Patreon first video um, that's going to be on the Patreon channel for a year. And then after that, I'll be re-released to the public. That's one of the perks of being a Patreon. Thanks guys. You guys keep me fed and pay for everything that makes this channel better every day. We're going to do a few videos on BGP. First one is default route BGP. Oh my God. Blood always gets stuck in my throat. There we go. Don't ask where I got it. Um, the next video will actually be a little bit more advanced because it'll actually be co uh, covering how to do your path weights and your route weights and uh, all that using the route filters, okay? With route filtering, you can actually do your, say this sub that's supposed to go this way and whatnot and all that, but we're not gonna confuse things right now because right now we're just gonna cover default route BGP. Where do you use default route BGP? Usually if you've got your own ASN and you're about to advertise your own subnet that you got from Apnic or uh, HeNet or whatever, or Aaron, whoever your regional provider is that you get your IP space from, right? To be able to advertise those and have some more control over your network, you don't need to host full tables. Oh, hell no. No, all you really need to do is you just need to have uh, your default routes so that you can peer with your upstream and you can send them whatever information that you negotiate with them. Pardon me one, for one second, there's a cat emergency. How do I pause this? Oh, I can't pause. Oh, I can. Cat emergency has been remedied. All right, so anyway, back at her. So I'm gonna demonstrate to you today uh, kind of a little peek of what your upstream has to do and what you have to do to make your BGP work. So let's take a look at that. Alrighty then. All right, so we're gonna prepend, prepare that. We're gonna prepend, pre 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 we're gonna pretend the router here on the left, I'm gonna do a cut scene now. Boop, cool, that I can do that. I've got buttons now that I can actually switch scenes with. That is awesome, no? All right, so if I go over here to the left, you can see that's our technical, our placeholder upstream router. So that's the company that's providing you with wholesale internet access, right? Oh, maybe I shouldn't be drinking first thing in the morning. Fuck. If we look over here, we're going to take a look at the BGP settings. First of all, we're going to look at our route filters. So we know that this upstream is going to be connecting to do downstream peers, okay? So we're going to do this part a couple of times so that you guys understand it, okay? So first of all is our route filters, okay? That's what you should always do first. So first of all, we are going to allow um, our router here, the upstream router, so the wholesaler, is going to allow for a default route to be passed on. It's going to be uh, given to the downstream users that are peering, okay? Then we're gonna drop everything else. We're not gonna send them any more routing information. There's nothing else going into the, into the routing tables, just the default route. That's all that we're giving them, right? And realistically, that's actually coming from the gateway IP that they're supposed to get anyway, so. All right, so now we've got uh, downstream in. So from our one peer, which is our router here, we're advertising. Let me go to my route filters here. We're going to be advertising 24.97.38.0 slash 24. It's a very small subnet, okay? Because we're going to allow this router to advertise that subnet to us on this router, we need to make sure that we have a rule in place that allows us to accept that advertisement from that downstream router, okay? This is the one for the other router that's going to be peering with this. And then this is drop literally everything else. Why? A wise man once told me that it takes two people to fuck up the internet when you're doing BGP. Because as the small ISP, okay, you've got to make sure that you've got your route filtering and all that in place, first of all, right? If you don't, you're going to advertise your internal subnets, your 10 dots, your 100 dots, your 172s, your 192s. You're going to advertise that to your upstream. And if you do, and your upstream doesn't have filters in place to catch that shit, it will go puking out onto the internet, polluting all the routing tables across the entire domain. And if that occurs, well, you'll just fucking kill the entire internet. Like, you know, a couple of bigger companies have done <laughs> in the past, right? So you gotta be careful about that. Oh, I need to clear my throat again. God, that cat's blood. Mm, damn. Okay, so anyway, now I have explained this. We work from our top down. This is basically putting in the placeholder to allow. That is dropping everything else. This is allowed, this is allowed, this is drop everything else. That's how the filter chain is working, okay? So I'm gonna leave this up in the corner here so you can see this. Now remember, the router on the left is your provider's router. So I'm kind of showing you, giving you some insight into the basics on what they need to do to make your shit work. 
remember that, okay? So now, let's go into the actual BGP stuff. So now, if we look at the instance here, we don't really need to pay attention to their instance because their instance is whatever they're doing with their specific configuration, okay? But where things are important is the peerings. So here is other router, and here is our downstream. So this is us, our router. Now, I've labeled it downstream, but let's just relabel it to our router so that it matches the name of our router. So this could be your ISP as an example. So why don't we go your ISP? Because this is kind of a, uh, an organizational tactic here so that you know, you're, you know what that peer entry is performing, what it's doing, and it's peering with this guy over here, okay? So now we need to put in the remote IP address here. So that's the IP address for our router. If we look in our IP addresses here, this is the slash 30 that your upstream has given you. Now, if you wanna understand about uh, upstream uh, peerings or upstream um, subnetting, uh, like transit, uh, I already did a video on that called uh, Distributing Public IPs. And and, but just to glaze over it, when you connect to your upstream, they're probably going to give you um, a subnet, okay? If they give you anything bigger than a slash 30, then they're just giving you basically like simple DIA or wholesale, right? But in most cases, as an ISP, you need to request a slash 30 for transit. That gives you two usable. Your router gets one, their router gets one. That's simply for connecting, coupling, fornicating the two routers together so that they can carry your traffic, the transit, right? Over transport. Now, um, if that's the case and you don't have BGP, your upstream provider will usually uh, assign you your subnet by routing it to you, which means that they'll create a route entry, a static entry that will say this slash 24 is present at that 64.83.199.2, okay? And if that's the case, then the rest of the routers in their network then advertise that, oh yeah, that subnet's present over here. And since they're advertising to their upstreams or their upstream peers, probably at data center, oh, dark one, accept my offering, go away. I love you. Yeah, then that's how that works. <laughs> <laughs> so in this case here, we've got our slash 30 for transit, but we're advertising our own subnets and they're allowing us to advertise them and allowing that to pass through into their um, routing table and then get handed off down their routing chain to their peers where they're advertising their networks. And there's a whole bunch of inception type bullshit going on, but we don't need to get into the entire hi uh, hierarchy of things, okay? So now there's our IP. There is our ASN. We are using internal ASNs, private ASNs for today's lab for the purposes of keeping it simple. And of course, I'm, I know it doesn't matter, but I get people shit all the time for using uh, public information on uh, their stuff, okay? We are using fake public IPs here, random ones that I literally just pulled out of my ass and programmed into these guys, just so you guys have an example to look at. But I don't like to use public stuff in labs, even though it doesn't matter. But anyway, it's just practice. So there is our ASN. Uh, there is our, as in our router. There is our remote IP, the IP on our router. There's our ASN, okay? Hold time, TTL, don't worry about that for now. We're gonna discuss that at a later date. There's our filters. So there's our in filter and our out filter. And with most peerings that occur where you've got multiple clients peering into you, uh, I'm not saying within your own network, I'm saying uh, the neighboring ISP is peered with the same upstream. They will have their own filter rules. Each network typically has its own filter rules on the upstream provider's router. Remember that, okay? So this one here, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just using common rules, okay? Now we're gonna do a default originate so that we can actually send our default route um, to them. So anyway. <clears throat> if installed because it'll go down if it's not present. It's a great way for automation, okay? The rest of this shit, I know you guys love to click through all these different tabs, but don't. Don't click through all these tabs, just this one, okay? So now, let's take a look at what's going on over here. Uh, actually, I'm gonna leave that up, sorry. Day drinking, but da 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 All right, so there's that, and there's our filters. And let's take a look at our routing table. IP routes, yeah, I could probably squeeze that in there. I could probably squeeze that in there, there we go. Just like that. Make all the real estate count, don't we? Yes. All right. So if we look at our routing table here, you'll see that one of the routes is already present. That's the route that's being advertised over here. So now we know that we've got a slash 30 talking between these two. So fuck it. We don't need those guys any in there anymore. So let's put the route filters up top here so you can see them because we want to know that they're there. Okay. There's our rules. I can probably just... Eh. We're not gonna discuss any of the other columns today because this is just default route BGP. I'm gonna keep reiterating that. Okay, there's our IP address right there. Let's put our routes up top here. All right, so you'll see here in your routing table, we have a dynamic active BGP. 
okay? So this dynamic active BGP is basically saying that we're receiving this from our upstream. Now I'm gonna show you something cool, some cool shit. We're gonna go, we're gonna pull up the BGP stuff now and put it right here. I'm gonna pull up our instance because our instance really, it's just very simple. Here's our peering. This is the advertised network. This is our subnet. We put it under networks. We put in our full uh, subnet range. So you'd put in the dot zero, which is the net mask slash 24 being the cider here, representing our full 255 range, right? So that's advertised here in the network section. Now watch what happens if I go to my instances or my peering, sorry, probably a better way to do this, and I turn this off. Oh look, we lost our default route here and over here our 24.97.38.0 to is gone. Yeah, why is that? Because the BGP, you know, fault and it's done. Now, you might wonder why this is beneficial to be able to see uh, activity or behavior like this, and I'll show you. Remember my OSPF video? In OSPF, we discussed about how you can have um, multiple uh, routers, multiple peers upstream, and be able to have failover. Well, this little setting here, if installed as type one, that one setting there, watch the OSPF video if you want more details on OSPF. This one here looks for your default route. If there's no default route there, it's not gonna tell the rest of the network that uh, it has the default route. So therefore, it's not publishing its default route anymore. The traffic knows that to get to the internet, it doesn't have to go towards this router anymore because there's no access. So instead, you've got another router somewhere else that's got another fucking upstream peer that's also got a default route on that router. And it's just gonna, instead of following shortest path, technically shortest path is now the other router because the other router still has connectivity. So all the traffic just immediately goes the other way. Now, this is also why I say that running DPLS isn't always beneficial and you should keep it for specific uh, scenarios. Otherwise, you have to do some janky shit running VRP between your two upstream or multiple upstream routers to simulate one big router, which then doesn't allow you to do proper traffic offloading for uh, load balancing and all that fucking crap, right? Anyway, let's go back to the basics. Okay, that being said, if you've got the instance set up so that it's redistribute default route if installed and this dot zeros in here, great. It will say, I'm a gateway. I go to the internet, come to me. If not, if if, if we just go back to the BGP instance here and turn this off, the peering, well then uh, under your OSPF, this will not be advertising anything. It won't be saying, hi, I'm a gateway anymore because it's not a gateway. It doesn't have a default route. That's how this all ties together. That's a very simplistic, thing or method or mechanism, whatever you want to call it, binds all this together, okay? So let's turn that back on and watch all this happen. So now, if we go over to our peer here, you see that we've got our upstream peers ASN here, and this is their IP. And you know what's really cool? There's a coincidence here. Look over here. It's also your gateway IP. Oh, oh my God. No, I'm not being facetious. I'm just trying to be funny to make you guys laugh. Okay, so we've also got our filters here, because if we don't filter, we have to rely on the filters upstream. Otherwise, you know, we could cause fucking massive havoc across the world. And just remember, uh, it takes two to tango, right? Da, 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 two to fuck up the internet. You know who you were that did it. I don't think that they're small enough to watch my videos anyway. So yes, there's that. Okay, so now we've demonstrated that we need to uh, set up our uh, instance itself for our upstream, okay? Now the peer, here's our peering. So we're gonna pretend that our router is literally our router. This is just our personal router on our ISP, our small little ISP that has maybe less than a thousand subs, okay? This is how we'll set this up, okay? So we've got our label. We could also call this AT&T as an example or uh, HeNet, like so, right? We could just label it like that so that uh, we know who it is that we're peered with, right? Which you should, because you're paying their bill every month. Then we've got our network here. This is where we put in the subnets that we're advertising. And if you look at the difference over here, you don't see that over here, right? Because this will populate into their routing tables. And then it just repropagates across their network out to the upstream peers on their end, right? Okay, the peer. That's it. So once again, looking at our routing table here, we are allowing the default route to come in. The, the zero is important here. Yes. Um, so this is our kind of our, uh, our entry that says this is allowed. This is dropping everything else. That is allowed to go out. This is dropping everything else. Remember, route filters are very important. Okay, they save you from all sorts of shit. So now, let us go and bring up another router. I'm gonna bring up a new router and we're gonna program it from scratch. So this is some other router. There we go. Let's make it fit. Let's set up BGP on this router. Okay, so I've already programmed in the IP address. We're going to be 64.83.199.6, okay? Slash 30. Um, this router over here is our upstream, our provider's router, and it's dot five. It's the first IP, right? So let's set up our BGP now. So first of all, let's go into our filters and create our filters. Um, so the first filter we're going to do is we're going to do an accept, and we're going to allow the default route to come in. We're going to call this one ATT in, right, for the, our AT&T peer, right? We'll add these as our network grows and we have more peerings, right? 
Just zero. Just zero. Just, just zero. Just. Okay. Now we need something to fucking tell everything else to fuck off. Okay. So AT and T in. We're gonna go actions. Discard. Discard. Picard. No, I love John Luke Picard. He was a cool hero. Okay. So now we need our subnet. This is the one that we're gonna be advertising to our upstream. Oh my god! I just cracked my neck. Oh, that feels great. Okay. So here is our subnet, which I randomly pulled out of my ass. Okay. So we're gonna add our filter. So this is an accept, and this is gonna be for our. Uh, let's see here. This will be our out rule now. So we're gonna go. Um, EDT out, and let's put in our subnet here. There we go. Now our prefix length is going to be zero, or sorry, 24 through 32. We're gonna allow that specific range for our prefix here. Need a, oops, did I accidentally push a button? I accidentally pushed a button. Fuck, I gotta move this thing out of the way because my, my huge massive marbly wrist thingies are going to push buttons. I'm getting dumber. Um, so now we're going to accept this and we need to now add our discard. So actions, discard, because we're just going to throw everything in the garbage here, right there in the fucking toilet, because we don't want anything else going out. So this is our, I'm going to let you go out, okay? Then the one right after it is, fuck everything else, it's in the toilet, okay? That's that. So now, let's set up our BGP. All right, so we need to go to our instance here. Uh, I believe that our ASN that I've chosen for this will be um, 64514. We'll go over here and cheat, see? Other router. Yeah, 64514, okay? There we go. We're going to hit apply here. Simple. Now we're going to go to our network. So we're going to add our network that we're advertising. Don't worry about synchronized. We'll discuss that later. Okay. This is just to get you guys up and running properly with default route BGP. Now we need to put in our peers. Hmm. Okay. So we're going to call this one, um, Keynet or AT&T or whoever you have as a provider, right? So yeah, let's do, um, AT&T. Sorry. I switched providers in the middle, but that's how little it matters. The label that I'm using here, because as I said, it's literally representing your upstream provider. That's all. Here's our peer. Okay. Okay, so what's the IP of our peer? What's the IP that we need to use here? Well, if you want to cheat, well, there's no default route here. So, hmm, what kind of uh, subnet range do we have for our uh, connectivity, our fornication with our upstream? It is a slash 30. Our net mask is four, our first usable is five, and ours is six. So it must be, yeah, it looks like it's gonna be dot five. So I'm just gonna go in here and do a copy, and I'm gonna do a paste. We're gonna change that to a dot five for their IP, yes. And uh, let's see here. There we go. Default original if installed. Okay, we're going to put it in our uh, in and out real, uh, route filters. Brr, I'm talking too fast. Cool. So that's in there. So now we should see some magic happen. Oh, oh, lordy, 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 lordy. Look at that. It fucking worked. We have an established state. You want to look at status for some cool shit, which doesn't really matter right now? Yeah, it's established. Okay, cool. Now, if you look over here in the routing table in your upstream, you see dynamic active BGP. We're now receiving two uh, two subnets. We've got 88.69.69.0 and 24.97.38.0. Why? Because this peer here is advertising that subnet downstream, or sorry, upstream, 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 upstream. Okay, now, if we look at our routing table here, we now see that we have a default route, 0.0.0.0.0. That's all there is to it. And I know I make this sound easy, but I've been learning BGP for the last eight months. Trying to learn all the ins and outs. So I'm not an expert. I'm just trying to make it entertaining. I have rehearsed this. So if I fuck something up, tell me in the comments below so that everybody else can see what needs to be fixed. All right, so really that's all that there is to it. Like I said, there's no black magic to uh, BGP. Oh, we're done the setup now. Okay, good, hold on. All right, so now we have done the BGP. Like I said, very easy. It's very, very easy stuff. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Tell your friends, share the video. Um, yeah, and if you wanna help support us, um, I do wanna start doing YouTube full time so I can just focus on the channel and do all sorts of cool shit, which I have planned. Um, join us on Patreon and chip in whatever you can each month. Um, oh, also, we have a Misfix It Facebook page. The Facebook page has all sorts of stuff on it, not just uh, my videos, but I post all sorts of interesting stuff about science, medicine, biology, quantum physics, on there. All sorts of fascinating shit that you guys might be interested in if you're interested in this channel. And we are going to start doing more teardowns and stuff like that because I'm not going to pigeonhole myself just into um, doing um, these tutorials because there's so much more that you guys can learn and so much more fascinating stuff out there. So there's going to be lots of tutorials and whatnot and I'm planning on doing some site tours. So yeah, like, subscribe, comment below, participate. Yay. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope that I just made your brain slightly wrinklier. Yeah, I like getting my fingers into those folds and, you know, peeling the, the cranial meets apart and just oh it's so nice and smooth in there right <laughs> if you've got a smooth brain <laughs> all right mm, ciao